I'm now joined by Patrick Honehan, formerly of the Central Bank of Ireland, now at Trinity College Dublin. Patrick, how's it going? It's a great conference. I'm enjoying myself here in Florence for uh, the last couple of days, absorbing lots of different perspectives from different disciplines. So today we're talking about filling in the gaps in European governance. Why don't yeah. you tell me what you think Europe is doing well at the moment and what you think it's doing badly at the moment? Um, well, Europe has uh, pulled itself together from economically from the worst of the crisis and the movement is forward and towards stronger institutions, better organisation, lots of procedures for things Europe didn't have procedures about before. What's not going so well, I think, is bringing the people with the elites. So the people are still bruised and hurting from the downturn and uh, the complexity of the issues doesn't lend itself to having the people uh, enthusiastic about the reforms that are in progress. Okay, so if we assume that European institutions have become safer, stronger, more prepared uh, for the kind of economic turbulence that might be anticipated, uh, does that perception exist out in the markets and out in the public? Well, I think you can look, uh, in terms of markets, you can look at uh, interest rate spreads, you can look at uh, asset prices, and there has certainly been a dramatic change over the last three or four years. Uh, it doesn't bring us back to the pre-crisis situation. We do see spreads on sovereign debt, uh, different spreads for different countries, and, and that reflects a new reality, and, and that, that's a reality uh, has to do with um, issues of a bail-in, debt restructuring, uh, it, it is a new world. Uh, the, the whole question of, of bank restructuring, the whole question of sovereign restructuring around Greece, that has changed uh, risks and therefore prices in the market. And how confident are you that initiatives such as the banking union can help preserve stability in the continent? Well, the banking union has, uh, I think, made a great step forward in one particular dimension, which is taking away the um, the potential for a, a, a narrow national perspective on the supervision of banks and bringing the sort of coolness and distance that you can get from a multinational dimension to, towards uh, bank supervision. So I think some of the mistakes that were made in the past will not be made again. Perhaps different mistakes will be made. Mm. And is the euro, the currency itself, to blame for what's happened, do you think? The idea of a single currency? My own perspective on this is that the, uh, the euro, uh, the, the whole system was set up for smaller shocks than actually occurred. It was set up for moderate shocks. It, it could have coped with moderate shocks. It, the management of the economies was not done well within the euro, which allowed the emergence of much larger shocks. So I don't think the design was as bad as people say, but, but the uh, management of national economies was quite poor and the system was not robust enough to, to cope. Um, there are improvements in that dimension, not least in the management of national economies, but talk, still problems. Talk me through your prognos prognosis going forward in Europe. Um, do you advise caution, confidence? Um, <laughs> how, how should we proceed? It's always good to be confident and cautious at the same time. <laughs> uh, uh, we live in an uncertain world. There are a lot, of, uh, a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of big trends that have been there in the last few years which will not continue. Um, uh, trends such as the uh, r rapid growth and convergence of living standards in, in China. towards uh, that, that's, that is slowing and that has been a boost to demand in the euro area and, and around the world. That is slowing. The uh, fall in oil prices has good and bad about it, but certainly there, there uh, are threats from all these sources of turbulence. And I think that's the way we need to approach the future, not, uh, not just with confidence, but with a lot of caution. And if, if right now, instead of sitting down with me, you were sitting down with Juncker and Draghi and you could give them one piece of advice, <laughs> what would that be? Um, well, I mean, the five presidents report, and you've only mentioned two of them. Uh, I personally am an enthusiast for that kind of uh, move towards greater uh, coherence and towards greater cooperation in, in, in the challenges facing Europe. Okay. Well, I'm sure they would agree. All right. Uh, Patrick Hernan, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.